to everyone for joining us today. My name is Stephanie and I'm the Community Planning Advisor with the EFCL. This presentation is a very brief introduction to the world of zoning and a primer for why it's important for Edmonton to renew its zoning bylaw. Our hope is that you'll watch this video prior to attending any of our online sessions on the topic. So with that said, let's jump right in. What's the purpose of these sessions anyways? Firstly, to raise awareness about the Zoning Bylaw Renewal Initiative and get leagues interested in participating. Secondly, to share engagement opportunities and to ensure leagues understand how to participate. And finally, to explain the purpose and the content of the recently released discussion papers so that leagues feel informed about this work. So, what is the Zoning Bylaw anyway? The Zoning Bylaw contains the rules and regulations for the development of land in Edmonton. For the purpose of land development, the City of Edmonton is divided into zones. The zone that a particular property is located on determines what can be built on that property. In Edmonton, the zones are classified as follows. Residential, commercial, industrial, urban services, agricultural and reserve, direct control, and special areas such as the ICE District. The Zoning Bylaw Renewal is being guided by the principles described in the City of Edmonton's draft city plan. Well, the draft city plan would be an entire webinar on its own. One concept that is worth mentioning here is the notion of 15-minute districts. A 15-minute district is a collection of neighborhoods that provide a range of destinations, services, and amenities like grocery stores, parks, cafes, rec centers, health centers, schools, and workplaces that can be accessed within 15 minutes in that district. This concept is very important to keep in mind because many aspects of the zoning bylaw renewal that we will discuss are either wholly or in part aimed at achieving this district concept. So why the need for the renewal anyhow? The renewal will include rethinking how, what, and why the city regulates in terms of zoning and land development. The current zoning bylaw has not been substantially updated since 2001. In 2001, this was largely a consolidation effort designed to harmonize five different land use bylaws. The last significant overhaul actually hasn't occurred since 1961. So now, 60 years later, many development regulations that were designed for a small prairie city in the 1960s are still shaping the built form of Canada's fifth largest city in 2020. For those of you familiar with the city's zoning processes, you will know the bylaw has been amended many, many times in the last several years. Taken together, these numerous amendments show that the bylaw is not meeting market demand in the city. The first reason for an update is that the current bylaw does not support compact, mixed use and sustainable development. Mixed use development generally means a combination of different land uses, either within the same building or within the same development. So looking at this street um, in downtown Edmonton on 104th, we see an example of a mixed use development in action. This is just one such development on the street that would qualify as mixed use. At the very top of your screen on the right hand side, you'll see a residential tower which features a variety of residential units. The tower sits on what is called a podium where you see space for commercial activities like restaurants, office space, cafes and other small shops. This style of development provides for a variety of complementary and integrated uses that are walkable and within a given neighborhood or development project. There is also excellent access from the street to the LRT and major bus routes around, along Jasper Ave. It's also important to note that mixed use development can be vertical in nature or horizontal in nature. Vertical development is like what we just saw, where the building combines different uses within the same building, whereas horizontal mixed use development combines single use buildings and a range of land uses within one block. And if we were to take a closer look at other parts along the street, we would see examples of both vertical and horizontal mixed use development. The second reason why it's time to renew the bylaw is that the current zoning bylaw keeps activities separated from each other. This means that communities like the street that we just saw, where housing, businesses, recreation, and employment centers are all easily accessible, are actually really, really rare in Edmonton. Conventional zoning has, over decades of use, tended to isolate low-density residential from all other types of development. This makes it difficult, if not impossible, to walk from home to purchase even a container of milk. Separation of uses has also reduced the efficiency of public transportation and travel by personal automobile has become the default because it is usually just so much more efficient than traveling by bus or LRT. The current zoning bylaw also places administrative burden on businesses opening and growing in Edmonton and can even prevent them from opening up at all because the current regulations lack, lack the adaptability necessary to accommodate new and emerging business types. You can learn a bit more about what those barriers look like and how the new bylaw might be better able to support small business by reading the small business paper on the Engage Edmonton platform or by watching the webinar from our last session. 
And finally, the current zoning bylaw can be used as an exclusionary tool to control certain segments of the population or business types under the guise of protectionism. So the new zoning bylaw will attempt to correct all of those features that I just spoke about by firstly introducing a hybrid bylaw. This means it will move away from strictly use-based zoning that separates uses from one another to a hybrid approach that incorporates form-based zoning, performance-based zoning, and incentive-based zoning while retaining use-based zoning for very simple development. In doing so, the new bylaw will attempt to foster quality environments through a shift from focusing only on the separation of land uses to paying more attention to the built form and how buildings interact with the public realm. We won't spend any time talking about performance or incentive-based zoning, but again, more information is available on the engage.edmonton platform. Instead, we will spend a little bit of time talking about form-based zoning. So the current system of conventional zoning was essentially devised to present, prevent undesirable juxtapositions like factories next to homes and really incompatible scales of development. Separating incompatible land uses makes sense when we're talking about things like heavy industrial uses next to people's homes, but there are actually many diverse land uses that are actually quite compatible and separating them can be harmful to communities. The most ex obvious example of this harm being urban sprawl, which costs the taxpayer enormously and forces the majority of us to drive everywhere we need to go. Form-based codes offer a new way of thinking about development regulations. They act as design guidelines and address the relationship between building facades and the public realm. They address the relationship between the form and mass of buildings in relation to one another, and they address the scale and the type of streets and blocks. Whereas in conventional zoning, there isn't a lot prescribed for how the building needs to interact with the street. So what I'm gonna do for you is play a short video that helps illustrate what a form-based code is and how it differs from conventional zoning. I want you to pay attention to how streets are transformed from somewhat bleak and lifeless places to active and visually appealing places by using regulations that prescribe how the building should actually interact with the public realm. This video comes from the Form-Based Codes Institute. The form of our towns and cities affects the quality of our lives. The facades of buildings should welcome people, not repel them. Buildings should contribute to the public realm, not hide from it. Great streets happen when road and building designs are matched. Small towns can be revitalized by building on their original form. How we regulate urban forms shapes the life of communities. All right, so sorry if that video was a little bit grainy, but I think it does a good job of explaining how form-based zoning differs from conventional zoning and how a form-based code can help places that were planned using, con using conventional zoning really transform. So the new bylaw will also feature fewer, more enabling and inclusive zones. So this means the new bylaw will allow a range of built forms and uses in most standard zones. And when I refer to uses, I'm talking about residential uses like houses or apartment buildings or commercial uses like grocery stores or cafes. Standard zones will follow a clear progression with distinct differences between each zone. Single function zones will be reserved for the highest risk uses that have the potential for greater land use impacts such as heavy industrial uses. The new zoning bylaw will also expand those use classes I've been talking about. So the current bylaw has 127 different land uses. By combining the uses, it will result in groups of broader categories, which will allow for a greater range of activities to occur in a particular building. And finally, the new bylaw will have fewer regulations and thus less control. Overall, the new bylaw will create a much more permissive environment for development in the city. 
So that finishes up the information I have for you on the impetus for the renewal and the ways in which the new law bylaw will likely be different. As you can imagine, overhauling such a massive document is going to take a lot of work. Um, so to help residents explore the various aspects of zoning, the city has been releasing a series of discussion papers. And these papers provide the preliminary thinking and direction for the bylaws regulatory framework. The papers have been released in the batches visible on your screen with the opportunity to provide feedback on the papers themselves on the Engage Edmonton platform. So the EFCL did host a webinar for the second batch, which can be accessed via our YouTube page. For the first batch, we just put together some review materials, which were sent out over email. Um, and on October 27th and 28th, we will also host webinars on the third batch. In the new year, there will still be plenty of opportunity to get engaged outside of these papers. So with all of that said, if you do find you'd like to learn more, get engaged or share your thoughts, you can go to the Engaged Edmonton platform. I've included the link here for your reference. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you at our next webinar.